everyone uh, today's collaborative learning activity is guided by dr bhushan sir and dr pandey sir uh, today's topic is uh, lateral pharyngeal space infection so this topic can come as a long answer question in the following format uh, definition spread of infection boundaries and contents clinical features and management and complications this topic can also come as an faq but mostly an leq so what is a lateral pharyngeal space it is a type of parapharyngeal space what is a parapharyngeal space it is a it is also called pharyngo maxillary space and is located in the upper neck this space is one of the major pathways for the spread of head and neck infection this space along with retropharyngeal space forms a ring around pharynx and together form a pathway for the spread of orofacial infections so lateral pharyngeal space and retropharyngeal space together form parapharyngeal space I, as you as you can see this is the lateral pharyngeal space and this is the retropharyngeal space so this is how it will look from outside a lateral pharyngeal space is a potential cone shaped space or cleft with its base uppermost at the base of the skull and its apex at the greater horn of the hyoid bone infection of this space is known as lateral pharyngeal space infection so as we saw in the definition it's a cone shaped or cleft shaped space with its base uppermost at the base of the skull because the base of the skull comes over here and its apex or the tip is towards the hyoid bone now as you can see this is the lateral pharyngeal space and around it there are many spaces in close proximity this is the submandibular space then this is the telgomandibular space then this is the uh, retropharyngeal space and if this gets infected the spaces around these also get infected which might cause head and neck infections so lateral pharyngeal space is divided into two parts anterior component and posterior component so this is the anterior component and this is the posterior component this diagonal thing is the stylohyoid process which divides it into two compartments how does the infection spread it can spread in two ways upwards through through various foramina such as foramen ovale foramen lacerum and jugular foramen present at the base of the skull producing brain abscess meningitis or sinus thrombosis as we saw in the definition the base of the uh, lateral pharyngeal space lies at the base of the skull and as we know the base of the skull have many foramens like ovale lacerum so when infection uh, is in the space it might spread through the foramens and it might cause brain abscess meningitis or sinus thrombosis the other way is downwards into the carotid sheath towards the mediastinum a pathway which mosher called the lincoln's highway of the neck as we saw the tip lies towards the hyoid bone and behind the uh, lateral pharyngeal space there is carotid sheath through which the infection might spread now how does the infection take place it can take place from an abscess extending backwards from the mandibular third molar area by backwards spread from sublingual submandibular and pterygomandibular space infections lateral spread from tonsillar abscess surgical displacement of mandibular third molar distally under the lingual flap and backwards into the lateral pharyngeal space boundaries anterior anteriorly it is, there is superior and middle pharyngeal constrictor and pterygomandibular raphe posteriorly which is behind the space there is carotid sheath stylohyoid styloglossus and stylopharyngeus superiorly there is skull base inferiorly there is hyoid bone medially there is superior pharyngeal constrictors retropharyngeal space pharyngeal wall laterally there is medial pterygoid muscle medial surface of the deep lobe of parotid gland ascending ramus of mandible so in a gist this is the way the boundaries might look like this is the pterygomandibular raphe which comes in the midline then there is also soft palate and tonsils then there is ramus of mandible and behind pre behind is a prevertebral fascia or the carotid sheath so this is how a lateral pharyngeal space might look like 
one should remember that the boundary walls of the space do not permit easy communication with adjacent spaces but the infection passes most easily between the lateral pharyngeal space and the submandibular space so how does this easy passage of infection happen so there is a weak zone in the posterior part of the fascia around the submandibular salivary gland and rupture of a submandibular abscess into the lateral pharyngeal space may result in the rapid onset of respiratory problems and one should also remember that the parapharyngeal spaces that is lateral pharyngeal space and tetrapharyngeal space these separate the muscles of mastication from the muscles of deglutition now coming to contents the anterior compartment has lymph nodes ascending pharyngeal artery facial artery loose areola connective tissue the posterior compartment has carotid sheath internal jugular vein internal carotid artery vagus nerve glossopharyngeal nerve spinal accessory nerve hypoglossal nerve and cervical sympathetic trunk so this cervical sympathetic sympathetic trunk has three nerves those are nerve 9 10 and 12 which are glossopharyngeal is nerve 9 nerve 10 is vagus nerve and nerve 12 is hypoglossal nerve now coming to this diagram as you can see there is lateral pharyngeal space over here then this area is the retropharyngeal space this is the and this is the anterior compartment and this is the posterior compartment and this is the stylohyoid process which separates these two this is the carotid sheath through which the infection might spread then there is this parotid gland whose medial uh, lobe is towards the lateral pharyngeal space this is a superior constrictor muscle and this is the tonsil if Uh, there is an infection the tonsil might shift towards the midline causing respiratory problems as well now neighboring spaces which are the spaces that lie around lateral pharyngeal space those are pterygomandibular space submandibular space peritonsillar space sublingual space and retropharyngeal space how will this infection present itself it will be in the form of a brony induration of the face above the angle of mandible what is brony induration it is a pathological hardening and thickening due to inflammation so that hardening and thickening will be seen above the angle of mandible it can present the, uh, the anterior part of the lateral pharyngeal wall may be swollen which pushes the soft palate and the palatine tonsil towards the midline dysphagia which is difficulty in swallowing malaise which is feeling of discomfort or uneasiness septicemia a uh, bloodstream infection caused by bacteria or their toxins if there is a lateral pharyngeal abscess there will be four cardinal signs which will be prominent those are trismus which is inability to open the mouth completely induration and swelling of the angle of the jaw fever and pharyngeal bulging so how will you treat this infection there are three ways a uh, intraoral extraoral and a combination of both intraoral and extraoral we'll first see intraoral approach it has two ways transpharyngeal and lateral transpharyngeal approach is made through tonsillar fossa but this approach is not recommended since adequate drainage is very difficult to obtain as we saw in the definition this is the tonsillar fossa this is the tonsillar fossa and it is not recommended since there is no adequate drainage now as you can see all these structures are in very close proximity to one another so there is no quite uh, space to get a drainage that's why this method is not recommended much lateral approach this is more easily performed by making an incision between the ramus and medial pterygoid and dissecting with a hemostat medial and posterior to the medial pterygoid muscle into the parapharyngeal space one has to remember that all peroral incisions are contraindicated when there has been prior hemorrhage no matter how minimal a extraoral approach advantage is it's the safest approach why because it is extraorally as compared to intraorally where the structures are in very uh closely packed indication uh involvement of posterior compartments technique 
an incision is made anterior and inferior to the angle of mandible blunt dissection with hemostat is carried superficially and medially along the medial pterygoid muscle into the pharyngeal space so describing the technique this is where you'll give an incision and this is where you'll put a hemostat so this is the extra oral approach a combined approach advantages it offers direct access into the lateral pharyngeal space aids in correct placement of the external incision in a swollen face technique the first two points in the technique are intraorally which are a lateral mucosal incision is made a large a large curved hemostat is passed lateral and lateral to superior constrictor and medial to the medial pterygoid muscle point number 3 4 and 5 is done extra orally a blunt dissection is carried out posterior inferiorly below the angle of mandible the tip of the instrument is palpated extra orally anterior to the sternocleidomastoid muscle and a cutaneous incision is made over the tip a drain is inserted and sutured to the wound margin to allow drainage so in brief the way this combination technique is done is an incision is made intra orally a hemostat is passed through the incision extra orally we will have to palpate the tip of the instrument which will come to anterior to the sternocleidomastoid muscle once you have palpated the tip of the instrument right at the tip you have to make an incision once you've made an incision you have to put a drain and suture it to the wound margin and allow it to drain so this is how the combination technique will take place what will happen if something goes wrong during the treatment septic jugular thrombophlebitis it means there is a thrombus in the jugular vein due to some bacterial infection carotid artery erosion now why carotid artery as we saw earlier in the posterior compartment there is an internal carotid artery so in the internal carotid artery leads to carotid artery which might erode bleeding from nose mouth or ear can be a warning sign cavernous sinus thrombosis meningitis which is inflammation of the meninges and brain abscess thank you